sense, and you know the deal, right? The arrows back and forward, and it seems everything is in the proper place. Yep. So that is going to talk about this program that allows it to use a bunch of real data. So I put the computer closer so you can talk in front of it. It's a global network of uh, data processing machines. Engage. So I'm going to be talking about an uh, online science project called Universe. I've been a volunteer since October 2011, and I'm going to be talking about the astronomy-related side of the universe. So one part of, part of the universe is Moon Tree. The images come from NASA's Ever Rome, which stands for Lunar Reconnaissance and Orbiter. And its mission is to help in future lunar land missions and to map the surface of the moon. I have looked through about 65 images. There are two parts of moon tree, Crater Survey and Boulder Wars. Boulder Wars. <laughs> Crater Survey is where we get some images and look for craters, boulders, etc. Boulder Wars is where we compare two pictures and see which one has the more most boulders. And the goal is to help in future lunar landings, you're yeah. saying. Huh? So this whole mission and this whole project is to help in future lunar land missions. So planet temperatures is where we look for exoplanets. Exoplanets are planets that orbit other stars. The data comes from NASA's Kepler, and its mission is to help um, to find Earth-like and habitable planets that might have life on it. I have helped classify 58 stars, and I've also found one planet candidate. So the data packages are sent to your computer directly, right? It's internet. Mm -hmm. We use the, yeah, it's internet. And you process, I think you have to click, click and then, so you want to open a link? Yeah, that link. That should open, oops. Oh yeah, wait, wait, it just crashed, uh, I need to just... <laughs> <laughs> that was from before, I needed to close the computer. Let's do it. Oh, it's already opening. Uh, I don't know when I opened, 68 things at the same time. Do it. It's easier to put the Google Chrome. <laughs> Stands for what? SPH? I'm not really sure, but okay. So, so this is the data given. Then you are looking through the light curves, and the example of a transit is this area right here. So transit is when a planet passes in front of the yes. star and blocks part of the light, right? So this, a light curve is actually, this. all this is the light. So a transit is when the, the star's light um, goes down. So. so that's a dip, so yeah, you get less light comes from the star when a planet blocks mm -hmm. part of the star, yeah? You can use like spectrums and other things to actually um, find, like, uh, figure out what might be in a planet, mm -hmm. like if there's any water vapor or anything. That's actually, harder, right? Spectrum yeah, needs much hard. more hours to actually, expose. I'm trying to get to the, to the other side. He wants to scroll, scroll it. He wants to scroll it to the other side. Yeah, because there's more. Um, you mean to the right? Yeah, yeah to, to the, the right. right. Mm. It's not showing up. Well, we can always 
Yeah. Make it smaller, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> so this, this is its location in the Kepler field. The, Kep the Kepler field is where Kepler looks for the exoplanets. So it looks in this whole area here, that red area. So. Kepler is a spacecraft which yeah. is in orbit now searching yeah. for exoplanets, right? Just to. So the data is all from Kepler. So this is the, uh, some information you did in while uh, you were classifying the planet too. So say everyone at home can download the program and then... And to act, it, you, you have to actually be a member. Mm -hmm. you can, there's other project, projects that I'll be talking about that you can do in so as long as you register this universe, then you can yeah. receive real data and do real science, right? So just click on the bottom uh, to, to the oh, yeah, left. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, that one looks like a screen. Uh -huh. Maybe twice. There. So here are some key events. One of them that happened very recently in Devon 2012 is, was when BBC Stargazing actually helped uh, planet hunters and planet hunters classified 1,084,760 um, light curves in 48 hours with the help of BBC Stargazing and Planet Hunters volunteers. And the results actually came on BBC Stargazing Live. That's the power of everyone's computers together, right? Yeah. You process lots of data, that's nice. So, one Another project in the universe is galaxies, and there are three different aims of galaxies. One of them is to hunt for supernovae. And the images come from ground-based observatories like LIC, which is actually in California. So here is one of my supernova discoveries, along with all other volunteers. So we get these images, these three images, and they ask us questions which help, which help classify the, the But so you compare them in different times, right? Yeah. And you see that there's something that got brighter, lighter, and so, hey, and then it disappears again. And so are these blind tests or just, again, real data? They give you a case where you can compare, you can, hey, this one you should find, and then they, they give you... Actually, they do that in, like, tutorials, uh -huh. but these are all, like, real data. Real data, good. So they actually use to, to um, when you, if you want to know how to do this whole, this whole thing, like, like more into detail, you have to go to the tutorial. Mm -hmm. And so you found one already, huh? Yeah, I already found one. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> With a bunch of other volunteers, too. Uh -huh. How many people uh, together would you to, to find? So how many? Oh. One, two, three. Oh, both of those, I see. Okay. Those are the nicknames. Yeah, those are actually their username. So about 10 persons, right? Yeah. Okay, another aim of Galaxy Zoo is to classify galaxies. And this is the main aim of Galaxy Zoo. So the images come from the Hubble Space Telescope. So we, so we they ask us questions, like, for example, if the galaxy is spiral or not, and if so, how many arms, and if there's any blobs in the galaxies, and if so, how many, and anything odd like two galaxies for example. It's always happening. Okay, so the last aim of um, of galaxies is to understand cosmic mergers. Here we run and make simulations for merging galaxies, and we compare them to. So. Compare them to what? Like we compare um, the galaxies among themselves. Yeah. This is because the, it's ga the galaxy, the simulations made by um, people who Com are using computer programs. Because it's very difficult for computers to recognize patterns in galaxies, right? It's one of the things that human eye does better to recognize elliptical, spiral, irregular. Computers have a hard time doing that. So this is where it's more handy to have an eye, right? Yeah. As far as I understand. So another project that you can do in the universe is Ice Hunters. Here we look for KBO, which stands for Kuiper Belt Objects, Asteroids, etc. The images come from NASA's New Horizons, and its mission is to go to Pluto and go be there to pass I have found 67 objects in 49 
described unknown before or uh, unclassified yet? Yeah, 67. So what kind of objects are they? Like, like, the, like asteroids or so aliens. And they don't exist before. They were new objects. They are unclassified, undiscovered. When you mean found? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the Milky Way project is where we help scientists understand the history of the Milky Way galaxy. The images come from the Spitzer Space Telescope, and we look for bubbles and other interesting objects. So, solar storm march, as the name indicates, is where we help find solar storms. We use data from the stereo spacecraft. I have completed spot training in track training where we get trained to spot and track Solar storms, mm -hmm. and actually, recent, very recently, um, a few volunteers have found a solar storm that has passed the Earth um, yesterday. Well, it didn't hit us, huh? Yeah, it didn't hit. The status said it missed the Earth. Right, okay. So this is the end of my slideshow. There are other projects that you can do, but not not related to astronomy. And I hope you enjoy um, the Zero Wars. And volunteer your computer as well, right? Okay, thank you, Tanishka. <laughs> thank you very much. So, Tanishka, can you just go to the website, zoouniverse.org? And. Oh, don't worry, you don't need to show it, it's just. And then people <laughs> just install the programs there, download and open an account and so on, right? <laughs> I think that's searching in my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, create an account and you select which projects you want to become part of, right? Actually, you actually, you actually get to be, you can be part of all the programs. Mm -hmm. So when you become a member of the new work, what happens is you can do any of these projects. Mm -hmm. There are actually other projects. As I said, there's yeah. also biology and whatnot, yeah, just not the, just astronomy. These are yeah. the other projects that you can do. Uh -huh. I was talking about the astronomy related mm -hmm. projects. So. Yeah, well, there you go. If you don't have anything to do in your free time, <laughs> volunteer your computer and you'll learn a couple of things. And you know, you may end up discovering some supernova like Tiny yeah. Speed or other so Kuiper planets, Belt. Solar storms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other question about this topic? So, I think it's an interesting journal club uh, showing you. And all the computers together, all my little computer, your little computer together. The power of all this network of computers corresponds to a supercomputer, right? So if the program f works nicely, all the packages of information go to each user, it's like providing the supercomputer to the project themselves. So it's quite useful. It's not just uh, funny stuff to do. It's indeed uh, useful, right? So yeah. that, that's something useful you're doing. It's yeah. fun and useful. Yeah, we can help scientists. And learning in the process with the training and whatnot, right? Very good. Okay, so let me know if you find any supernova or let Tanis know. <laughs> any, any other questions? Oh, sorry. Uh, there's some, like, you can play on your phone, too. Oh, yeah, some of them, exactly. You can install. Uh, yeah, there's actually one, one, one of the Zero Wars projects that you can install. So you wake up in the middle of the night, 5 o'clock, you uh, <laughs> find a supernova and you're bringing a computer, a cell phone. Something like that could okay. be could be possible. Okay, Tanish, any other question? No? Okay, thank you.